talking about perplexity, I have found is my favorite go-to chatbot for information. And what perplexity is really, it's they're getting it as more of a search engine. And what it's doing is trying to compete against Google. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go through a couple examples in using perplexity. And this is going to be unique because we'll also show you the app version also on my iPhone in a little bit. But let me do is ask perplexity a couple of things. Say, will a cause job loss? And then I'm going to do is that we have the pro version. And what the pro version is going to give you, I call this the Swiss army knife of chat GPT of large language models brought together in one location. So will AI cause job loss? So I'm going to do first is I am going to hit search there. And then I will go the old traditional way is go to Google. Will AI cause job loss? and then hit in, enter. And this is the response that I have gotten from Google. Our traditional way of doing search today is through Google. And this is the information. I know they've changed a little. We will do a review on that in the future. But you can see the response given by Google, multiple of the different websites that you can click on and read the information. But if you go back to the perplexity one, it is going to do is go through a couple different resources and it goes through three steps. So it's telling me this or sources and it's still thinking it's a little slow tonight. Must be a lot of people working on perplexity <laughs> tonight, but you can see the three steps they completed. It understood the question. It's searching the web. And when it's doing, it's looking at AI impact on job lost, AI job displacement, and AI job creation. And then it gave me 19 different types of sources that I could click on and jump to and look at. So I can go, okay. And then it's still looking way to answer it. It's very slow tonight, Juwan. But you can see that it is a very dynamic way of looking at information. And with the pro version, I'll click on here, the bottom part. While we're doing this, you can get then ask focus. It will then give you a couple different options where you can look at specific information that you want to search to go after, which is very interesting. You can do search all. We'll, we'll, we'll search the whole internet. It can do academic. It can do writing. And then it can do Wolfram, which is more computational. And then it can search YouTube and then Reddit. It's very good, especially I really have used on the academic side. It's really been good about really delving into the articles. And, and it's really giving the focus of the information and really does give you the capability of looking at that information so much quicker. Juwan, I'm going to let you, I'm going to jump it to you and you continue on the different features itself. Awesome. Awesome. So once again, like Mark said, I'm a huge champion of this technology as well. Not for sure what was taking so long with Mark to load on his end. So I went ahead and plugged in a, a quick prompt to see if I was going to have that same issue. But the prompt that I plugged in was what is the intended use case of perplexity? And once again, the intended use cases of perplexing is to be at search engine. As we begin to shift away from utilizing Google, which gives you different links that you have to then navigate through, it's compositing all that information and it's giving you somewhat of a summary of all of those different links. So you can get a high level, somewhat of a summary, read through it and determine if you want to use that source or not or, or read more about that source. Case in point. Um, it searches LinkedIn, searches Forbes. It gives you different information um, on, on the sources of where it's pulling this information from. And as you can see, each source has 
each response has a number beside it. If I click on that number, it actually takes me to the LinkedIn source. Not for sure if you can see that now, but uh, so it, it took me to the LinkedIn source. That LinkedIn source is, is the information where they put, extracted that information from. So that's the beauty of perplexity within itself. I, I tell my wife all the time, stop using chat GPT, start using perplexity. Perplexity is going to give you more sources that you can cross reference and go and view, validate for your own. Go back to, let me share this screen. But one, so it, as you can see, perplexity, number one, that was my first source here. If I click on the source here, it also pulled it from that same document. But as we scroll down, you got this pulling from both documents. And I, I just think that's pretty slick uh, from a search engine perspective. But then it also gives you some related topics that you may want to explore. Like how does it work? What are the benefits of using perplexity AI? And what industries can benefit from perplexity AI? That's just pretty slick within itself. I had this thread already open. And as you can see on the left-hand side, if I click perplexity, it takes me back to my home screen. Pretty much gives me a new thread. I could have clicked a new thread and I could have started my search from there. Mark already went through those, but I have my home screen as well, which takes me right back here. So those three different methods for you to get back to the same screen. You can do a discover. I thought this was pretty cool. Last night when I was playing with it, they had something up there about the Pope. Oh, here you go. So it's Pope still up here, but when you click on this, Pope went viral. And the Pope went viral because of his bubble jacket that he was wearing. He was wearing a, a sporty bubble jacket, but we found out that was a deep fake as well. It was AI generated, but you can click and get more images of what's going on, Pope. Um, and so from an image generation, it gives you multiple sources that you can pull from. What's going on with the Pope? The Pope attended the up and coming G7 summit or G7 summit will attend. Okay. But it just gives you a high level overview. Go down here. We're logged into the AI guy show. And this is what I thought was pretty slick because up until last night, I didn't know, but by default, you're using the AI model that you're using is the claw three. And so for those, this is the pro version. So with the pro version, it gives us an opportunity to select exactly which model we want to use. We can use the default. We can go to Sonar, chat GPT-4, and to Mark's point, it's that Swiss Army knife. It gives you all of your engines that you can pull from. You can even specify from an image generation, which you can use Playground Dolly 3. I wasn't aware of that. That's only in the, the paid version. It's, just, it's a pretty cool tool all around. You can download your images. Just a handy tool that I think everybody should, everybody should start playing with from that. That being said, Mark, that's just at a high level, some additional content all around. Right. Let me jump to the actual app itself. Let me bring this up. This is the mobile app and it's the pro version itself. It's very similar the layout as we had with the desktop version, but it gives you a couple different options and you could also upload video or files to this actual perplexity. It can read it. It can summarize it by this button here. So I'm going to do this right here and say, I want to do is take a photo. I'm going to do is take a photo of the stream deck, use photo. And what is this? And this is what I do. We talked about meta using the AI glasses. I use this. I just take pictures. If it's something I don't know, I use it when going fishing or if I'm looking at plants, I don't know what it is. It gives me information. Some of it's correct. Some of it's still not correct but it's learning each time as people do this. And it, this is correct. It's a stream deck and it goes through and gives me details on the stream deck itself. Nice thing about this also, I can talk to it. What is the weather today in Washington, DC? And then you just hit the, and then it will go through and look at the resources and give you that answer back. And it's fairly quick. Whoop. Street whoop, device shown here. <laughs> it says provide weather. It does not provide in weather information. So I'm going to do is go back and get out of this thread and then ask it because it thought I was still in that thread. So what was the weather today in Washington, D.C.? So it gives you a nice little, little thing here and then just going to. Come on, Plexity, we've been bigging you up. 
Yeah. Did it capture your voice? Yeah, I did capture it. Let me do it again. Let's do as. What is the weather today in Washington, D.C.? It captured your voice that time. So. Yeah. So you would diagrammed it there and it's giving you all kinds of information there with the perplexity. And it's very fascinating in using this particular application because it can give you so many resources and information. And when you look at it, the I use this all the time in looking at particular information. I don't know if I may jump back to this here. I don't know if anybody's seen this before on this, but if you go back to perplexity and then you can go to at the very bottom, it's called playground. If you hit that and then it gives you a capability of and that you don't have to pay for this. And this is, I thought, very unique. It gives you a lot of large language models that you can go and play with and analyze because a lot of times I'm always asking prompts, different information to see what kind of response I get back from different LLMs out there. So this one has a Llama 3 sonar and the, and then it also goes through Claude, high Llama 3, the $7 billion parameter model. And it just, you could see all the different ones that it has that you can go and have a conversation with. So let's do Llama. Will AI cause job losses and see what it comes back with. And it comes back very quick with perplexity, automation, job displacements. And this is what I like to do occasionally when I have a little extra time, not much, but go through and go test all these different models itself. It's a free little thing there. It's right on the very beginning. It's called the playground and it's a great tool if you want to go and look at different type of information on perplexity, because it's like I said, it's that Swiss army knife type of information, all consolidated together to give you one place that you can get information. Only thing you don't get is, of course, you Copilot, which is really chat GPT, but of course been modified. And of course you don't have a Google because it's competing against Google these days. But overall, perplexity is a great tool to use. I fully recommend it. It solves a lot of problems. And I can see that it's gotten more funding. It's got in early and had a great idea of saying, hey, let us be the one source for all these LLMs and be a search engine together. And I think they got in early enough that I think they will be successful long term itself and still be part of Google Gemini is not going away. Copilot's not going away. ChatGPT is not going away. But I think perplexity could be that fourth or fifth one out there that's direct to consumer. And then also, too, it can be a business to business application itself. Any other words on perplexity, Juwan? Um, this is my preferred tool that I go to and I use daily. So when we talk about what have we done with AI this week, I've always said I use the tools that help. Um, compose messages, do research, look up information for my job. And perplexity is it. This is my preferred tool. Yeah, I totally agree. It's gr a great. I love the mobile version of it. It gives me a lot of great information and I recommend it. So it's listening to me now. So it's, it's probably getting very good vibes from me, from perplexity big itself. Big <laughs> Oh, but it's where knowledge begins. I love that terminology. And to finish up, we're here really to solve today's problems with AI. And we're continuing to bring you different technologies that can make a difference. There's so much out there that we're going to bring to you over the years. And we look forward to having that feedback and communication with our family, friends, and our community that we're building here on the AI review room. Any final words before we leave today, Juan? 
Thank you all for pulling in for another special. This is episode six. Gonna be here to say that time, saying that channel on Lexi. Those who are interested in following us on that other platform, please let you are. And take our new stream with all of our platforms. I'm platforms available on that. Once again, thank you all. Always a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. And we look forward to having continuing our conversation. Thank you.